Hello, good evening, everyone. Welcome to all traders, investors, and everyone joining in this evening. We want to thank Tickmill for having me uh, start their webinar series to the futures market. My name is Ali Ahmedi, based out of Beirut, Lebanon, and I'm happy to be here to kick off the series to introduce the world of futures and how they're used and how they can benefit and enhance your investment strategy and portfolios alike. Uh, just a little introduction on myself. I've been in the, in the investment management and portfolio management and investment banking business for 18 years now. And uh, I couldn't be happier to, to be part of what Tickmill is doing and the growth that they're going through and uh, the introduction of what they're doing within their futures uh, contracts platform and investment uh, allocation and opportunities. Uh, to get things started, what we want to do is be very, very clear with what futures are. Uh, the futures products, what they are, what, you know, it's very basic. The webinar series uh, is going to be a culminate, it's going to culminate across eight, nine, maybe even 10 webinars each one becoming more and more advanced as we get through tonight uh, is going to be, uh, like I said, an introduction to what futures are, uh, what they're used for, how they were created, and give you a little bit of insight on and thought process on how you can incorporate them within your investment portfolio and strategy uh, according to what you're doing within your own portfolio. That being said, once again, good evening and welcome to all across the Middle East and the world that are tuning in. Uh, I appreciate your time and I hope uh, I can give you a little more insight as to what this sector has to offer. Uh, I'm not going to be uh, the professor type. Uh, I'm not gonna read every slide word for word and, uh, and, and, and expect you just to listen because that's not how I operate. Uh, I'm gonna treat you as my client. I'm gonna speak very candidly. Uh, I'm gonna speak openly and I will go over the slides in an illustrative verbal way. And we can have any questions that you may have. We can answer those at the end uh, for within the Q&A section. That being said, uh, kicking off Tickmill's uh, future webinar series, uh, part one of several, what are futures and how they are used? By definition, this is basically the only slide that I'm going to read word for word so that you can uh, understand verbatim what it means. Futures are derivative financial contracts that obligate, I've highlighted obligate because that is important to know, they obligate parties to transact an asset at a predetermined future date and price. The buyer must purchase or the seller must sell the underlying asset at the set price, regardless of the current market price at the expiration date. Underlying assets include physical commodities such as oil and gold or other financial instruments such as indices like the S&P 500, for instance, interest rates, U.S. Treasuries, for instance, FX, no further, no further explanation for what FX is. Futures contracts detail the quantity of the underlying asset and are standardized to facilitate trading on a futures exchange. Now, what are they when you hear someone says the word in futures? In finance, it's a contract. Basically, you are binding yourself to a specific time in the future at a specific price for an underlying asset or financial instrument or commodity. And the value of that contract is derived from the value of where it's coming from. Futures require the contract holder to settle the contract, which businesses, corporations, farmers, you know, from an agricultural sector, they will deliver the, 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 the product at the delivery date in physical form. In the investment trading world, futures contracts will be settled via cash settlement, meaning 
the difference at the end when the, the when the expiry date comes up if your contract is in the money you will be paid in cash if it's out of the money then you'll have a margin call and you'll have to pay that money you can buy or sell futures contracts at any time the contract that you're agreeing to pay on the price is on a specific date and each specific underlying futures contract will have a specific date uh, mentioned uh, for the underlying asset for which month and which year. This is an, inv and it's an investment vehicle. Let me put it this way. When you're building a portfolio, you have different asset classes. You have stocks, you have bonds, you have options, you have commodities. You also have futures. Futures are, from an investment perspective, are highly utilized at a higher level of finance. Once we get into the retail world, where what we're introducing to Tickmill and its clientele is how we're able to utilize what higher level finance, just call them people, or investment specialists use futures, how they're able to utilize them to help them uh, guide and protect uh, their management of the portfolio. That being said, these futures contracts, they trade on organized exchanges. Now these ex exchanges that I've listed here, the CME, the, the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, the CBOT, Chicago Board of Trade, NYMEX, New York, uh, Mercantile Exchange, COMEX, the Commodity Exchange, EUREX, the European Derivative Exchange, and the Small Exchange. These exchanges are all connected to your broker-dealer or broker, like Tickmill in this example. And these contracts are popular among traders who aim to profit on profit swings, as well as commercial customers who want to hedge their risks. That's getting back to what I mentioned earlier. Now, when we talk about this, this writing might be a bit too small here, but understanding what futures do, these contracts are traded on the exchange, through an exchange, through your broker, and they, they have standards that must be followed. And these standards are very straightforward and simple for every single one of the specific contracts that you would be involved in. These contracts dictate how trade would be settled between the two parties on the contract. Like I said earlier, these contracts will all be settled via cash settlement for the most part on a retail level. With, standard, with standardized futures contracts, we're able as investors to speculate and or hedge, depending on the size of your portfolio, on the future value on any asset traded that you find or that you would need to invest in over the short, over the next few months or upcoming short term, and able to either hopefully profit from uh, the, the, the investment that you're wanting to, to gain from. Now, when you look at from a hedging perspective, when parties get into contracts to hedge positions, what does hedge mean? Hedge means, okay, I am long the S&P 500, meaning I'm invested, meaning I want the S&P 500 to move up. What's happening in today's world and time? Specifically, as we're talking right now, I'm looking at my screen, the market's down again today. The Dow is down 707 points as, as I speak right now. We have geopolitical crisis with Ukraine and Russia. We have an increase, a very sudden increase and spike in oil prices. Uh, that oil right now, as I speak, is trading at 105. Uh, we have, before the Ukrainian and Russian geopolitical crisis, we had what? Inflationary. We have the highest inflation in 40 years in the United States market. It's over 7%. You have Wall Street talking about anywhere between four, five, maybe even six interest rate hikes this particularly in this particular year for 2022. 
So this opens up a wide range and a wide spectrum and opportunity to engage in futures contracts. You got interest rates, which is possible with US treasuries. You've got commodities, which is possible with oil. You've got the geopolitical tension uh, that can move gold. Gold is also up as we speak right now. Gold is, at, is up 34 points, trading at 1934. Uh, and then you also have uh, what's happening in the markets. What's going to happen when the interest rates hike? Are they going to hike now with the geopolitical tension or are they not? These are all reasons for you as an investor to do a little bit of research based on your portfolio, based on your sentiment. Uh, it's going to finish quickly. It's not going to finish quickly. These are all questions that they have the answer. That's not possible. This is what makes markets. No one knows what's going to happen between now and the end of the year, where the S&P 500 is going to be where oil is going to be, where gold is going to be, where the interest rates are going to be. This is a prime, prime, prime opportunity to learn, understand, and engage in futures, either on a speculative basis or to hedge your portfolio. portfolio If you have a big portfolio and you have overweight exposure in certain sectors. This is a perfect opportunity. It's a perfect sector. It's a perfect instrument to use, to utilize and benefit from. Now, traders and investors use the term futures in reference to an overall asset class. All right, now, like I just gave you what's happening in the world as we speak today, there's a lot going on. So many, so many variables, so many moving parts, market moving up, mark, market moving down. Why? Can they say it's only because of Ukraine and Russia? No. Can they, can, can they only say it's because inflation is at its highest rate in the United States, the largest market in the world in the last 40 years? No. Can they say it's because the Federal Reserve is going to raise interest rates? No. It's a combination of many variables. So you have different sectors within the futures market that you can get into. You're talking commodities, you're looking at crude oil, natural gas, to agricultural, corn, wheat, uh, you know, what happens in, in, in a natural disaster? Does anyone know when a natural disaster is gonna happen, like a hurricane, مثلا, or uh, uh, a horrible, let's say, elongated winter that we're not able to to uh, to ferment and toil the, the 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 soil and get it prepared uh, for the upcoming uh, harvest so that we can plant and harvest and expect what we want to reap in at the end of the harvest season that's an also an unknown that's why futures are there you also have indices, stock indices for the s p 500 but the titla but the tinza we've seen the volatility uh, just look at the last week, how much volatility we've had just in the S&P 500 alone. Currencies, prime example, everyone is trading currencies. That's the largest market in the world outside the fixed income market, the bond market. You're talking Euro, US dollar, sterling, the yuan, etc. What's going to happen to these currencies? Do you think the Euro is going to go up? or go down because of what's happening in, 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 in Ukraine and Russia. It's a speculative, speculative play. Depending on your portfolio, how much overweight, how much, uh, 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 let's say, risk or how much exposure do you have uh, to specific currencies. Uh, metals, gold, silver, uranium, platinum, etc. Then the interest rate markets, everyone's talking, Wall Street, four to five, maybe six interest rate hikes. Has seni lahala. Yani, 
يمكن بتصير ثلاثة ما بتعرف يمكن أربعة يمكن سبعة ما حدا عارفين إذا بتطلع how are you going to hedge how are you going to be able to protect yourself in situations when they are out of control or the variable is very volatile like it is now that the one in one word it's futures very simple diagram you have traders like yourself like myself we have investors like yourself like myself short term long term retirement planning uh, day trading investment trading portfolios there's traders of all sorts and they get in all in all sorts of sectors difference in indices european indices united states indices different types of commodities they all end up having a broker tick mill prime example that's our broker so we have our account with tick mill we want to engage in futures we want to be able to hedge or we want to speculate and say you know what i shan wahat nain tlati am basir انا اذا نفت هلا 105 البرميل انا بقول من هلا لاخر سنه يمكن تصير 150 عشان مطول القصه مع اوكرانيا وروسيا خلينا let's go ahead and, and get involved in a futures contract you deal in with your broker tick mill the beauty of futures is you don't have to come up with the large sum of capital for the full contract you can purchase it on margin it's a fraction each each future each specific sector within the futures market has different margin requirements which is a small percentage of each contract needed so on margin and you've protected yourself whether hedge or speculation in the futures market and tick mill then takes it to you know, those exchanges that I just mentioned in the previous slides, CME, CBOT, NYMEX, EUREX, et cetera, et cetera. All right, question, is it a derivative? Yes, futures are derivatives, but what does a derivative mean? Derivative is not a scary word. Derivative. derivative is a financial term and a derivative only means is it is a, a financial instrument financial asset based on or backed by a specific asset class just like options i'm sure most of you have heard of what options are and how they operate that's also a derivative futures are also a derivative difference between futures and options options give the investors the option to either exercise or not exercise their strike price my futures it is what it is it's an obligatory contract you buy the contract or you sell the contract at a specific price at a specific month at a future date and upon expiry during that time up until expiry the volatility of the market will either increase the value of your contract or decrease the value of your contract until the expiry date but the beauty of futures you can close your contract at any time as a you're long you bought a contract and you're happy with your gains and you don't want to wait until the expiry date you can take the opposite and close your position and sell. You take the profit off the table. You want to wait it out till expiry date, digital expiry date. If you're in the money, they settle the cash settlement directly into your account. If you're out of the money, it's a margin call. You got to settle up. What happens if you hold the futures? contract until expiry uh, until expiration or expiry date i just mentioned they will look at the price based on the contract that you own whether you bought or sold your contract the contract at expiration date 
in the Ripan Ya Khisran. Ripan cash settlement, Didri Behsebok. Khisran, you've got to settle with the broker. Minal Ekhir. Very simple and straightforward. Now, this is where you have to be careful. Because futures are a specific asset class and because they involve large sums of money per contract, regardless of the asset, whether it's gold or oil or indices, interest rates or FX, et cetera. Each one of these contracts, one contract, Masalan, for oil, each contract is based on 1,000 barrels of oil. They do the math. Is a, uh, like right now, it's trading at 104. Let me just check now where oil is to give you a, a, a better idea. Oil right now is at 106. It's already up a point during our webinar. It's gone 105 and a half to 106 and a half. Okay, but that's a lot of money. So there is margin involved. This means leverage. So when you're dealing with leverage, you have to be very careful because you can amplify. Amplify, yani fik zid, bezidi, ribeh, awal khsara, badik tintibi. And if you have a margin call, that means the market has moved against you. And in order to keep your position, the broker is going to call you and they're going to say, Ali, do you want to keep your position? If you're going to keep your position, you need to make this margin call in order to keep the contract viable or live, active in the market. The amount held by the broker in the margin account can vary depending on the size of the contract and the credit worthiness of the investor. And when we say credit worthy of the investor, basically, the retail level, across the board, the same for everyone. But when you're dealing with larger corporations, shirikit, uh, conglomerates, uh, 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 manufacturers on a larger scale, this particular, this particular margin uh, is going to vary. And depending on the size of your company and the size of your account with the, the, your broker or your broker dealer will allow, but on, across the board but it kun uh, the exchange where the futures contracts trades will determine if the contracts now hala and i'm back when we're talking about physical delivery or cash settlement for the most part we're everything that we're talking about tonight will be cash settlement but when you talk on a larger scale when we're dealing with futures uh, with farmers that are uh, harvesting wheat or corn or pork belly or cattle for whatever reason when when they have their harvest season starting they have to forecast at the end of the year whether they're they're going to make money or lose money but they can't harvest and then hope what they take to market will sell at a, at a higher market price than what it costs them to produce and harvest what it, it is that they were producing. So what do they do? They go and they engage in a futures contract. But the difference between them and us as investors managing our own investment portfolios or trading portfolios is that they have a physical delivery. When the expire, expire date comes, before the harvest season, they've already signed in on a futures contract at a specific price. If the market has moved up higher than the price that they agreed on, they lose out on that difference and they have to physically deliver. Even though they've lost, they still have to physically deliver whatever it is that they are supposed to deliver. 
Uh, but in our case, for the most part, is cash settlement. Again, futures, basic in a basic sense, you have two reasons to use them. You can either speculate. I think oil, masalan hala, it's moving up. Can it reach 150? I don't know. Let's say I think it's going to reach 150 between now and the end of the year. I think uh, what's happening Russia, Ukraine, it's already up a point in less than 20 minutes, just today. Okay, and I'm going to take a, I'm going to speculate and I'm going to buy a futures contract and I think it's going to hit 150 by the end of the year. Each day, each passing day between now and the end of year, if my contract is expiry date is in December, you're looking at an increase in value of that contract. I can either hold it until the end and wait it out or during the course of the year, as it fluctuates in price and moves up in my favor, once I'm happy with the profitability rate, fee sakara. I can close it out and take my profits off the table. So I can use it from a speculative perspective based on what's happening around me. Like I said right now, it's so hamye from all perspectives. Volatility in the stock market, volatility in the interest rate market, volatility in the commodities with, uh, with uh, oil specifically based on geopolitical tensions. Gold, Kamena, it's prime. There's many opportunities to look at from a speculative perspective. At the same time, they're used for hedging. You can look at your current portfolio for those that buy and hold, for those that have larger portfolios, the ones that look at a longer term perspective on the horizon, knowing that just information, if you had put $10,000 in 1940 in the S&P 500, you would have over now $3.5 million worth in the S&P 500 in the span of what, 70, 80 years? And you're talking about from the end or actually during the beginning of World War II, all the other wars that took place, the oil crisis in 70s, the dot-com bubble in 2000s, the SNL crisis in, in, uh, in uh, the early 90s, the housing bubble in 2008, all of those major quote-unquote crises that everyone panicked and was worried about in the portfolio, the stock, uh, the Black Friday stock crash of 25% in one day back in 1986 or 87, people panic selling with all that being said, if you had put $10,000 in 1940 into just the S&P 500 index and just let it sit, right now its value is over $3.5 million. These types of investors that have larger portfolios, that have bought quality stocks or quality positions or a well-rounded diversified portfolio, depending on what their interest is, futures is a prime opportunity for you to take in times of uncertainty like now to take positions to hedge in case of the moving against you in whatever sector you may be. How to trade futures. We are going to have, as I mentioned at the beginning, this is the first of several webinars in tick mill series on how to trade and understand what futures are how to trade futures we're going to get as we get into next week's seminar and the following seminars that come afterwards we'll be getting into more details as to how to value them how to uh, understand where the markets are moving how to speculate and when not to speculate uh, there is no true answer as to what's going to happen in the market. 
but we can see that the market is having trouble at the moment. So we can say speculatively, market is in a recessionary corrective territory right now. Can it continue to slide? How can I trade? How can I get involved using futures as a tool, not only to protect, but at the same time to trade as part of my portfolio and be profitable? You can gain access through Tickmill. We trade at Tickmill. They trade futures among, among other investment classes uh, from FX to stocks, to bonds, to commodities, options, futures now included. So getting started, this is the purpose of this webinar, understanding what futures are and as long as you understand, information is power. Is the entire fan what you're investing in? Then you're going to have more confidence in taking that step forward. But hadn biji, masalan, you go back ten years ago. Hadn alik Bitcoin, umannak fahman shohi Bitcoin, umannak fahman shohi cryptocurrency, umannak fahman shohi blockchain. Ma hadn arab sawba. Is is afin an irja la wara ashra snein. Who would not buy Bitcoin? Mahada. Everyone would buy it. Everyone would get involved in it. These are the types of where power is in the information, understanding the power behind futures, Shumaneta futures, how they can help what you're doing, how they can enhance what you're doing, how they can hopefully make you more profitable at what you're doing because of using margin, using the leverage, being able to get involved in larger contracts with large assets, large assets, large asset sectors, and being able to hedge and or speculate according to your needs. Once you've made that first, let's say, I don't want to say trade, but that first venture, once you've taken that first step through the doorway into your first futures contract and get a real essence and feel how it moves and you're able to see in your account the value of it increase, decrease on a daily basis, will give you more clarity and at the same time, more confidence as to what you should and or shouldn't be doing when it comes to your portfolio. Futures are not scary. But once you understand them, the purpose of what we're doing in this series is to get you more comfortable, to get you more knowledgeable so that you can, with confidence, say, you know what? I now know more what I can do with futures and I know how I'm going to use them and I know why I'm going to use them. You're going to win some and you're going to lose some. This is the market. This is what makes markets. But if you have a strategy in place, portfolio futures is an excellent opportunity to enhance and protect at the same time what you're doing overall. I'm going to give you an example. I'm going to read from the screen. Uh, so, uh, like I said, I'm not that type that likes to read word for word, et cetera, et cetera. But so let's take an example here. First line to speculate on the price of crude oil and enters into a contract starting in May. And at that point in time, he says, you know what, I think oil is going to increase by the end of the year. So he ends up taking a December contract, a futures contract that expires in December. And the value is at $50 of the contract in May. Okay. Now, remember, I told you, 
the per contract when it comes to crude oil it's 1000 barrels so the investor now has a position of fifty thousand dollars worth of crude oil now the trader will only need to pay a fraction of that up front with the initial margin which i mentioned earlier hasab al broker hasab what the individual broker that you deal with tick mill hopefully you'll be able to get we'll be able to get into their rates in future series as well but you will have to come up with the margin which is a fraction of the cost you're not going to have to pay the fifty thousand dollars to take this position but throughout the year in may to december oil but the titla come in but the tins are more the dull safety tala 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 kill a lot well come in but the dollar is like a little what it's going to have this type of movement throughout the year but depending on the trend i'm thinking but the titla so i'm hoping the trend is going to be moving up this way instead of the volatility down this way uh, as time passes futures contracts they expire on the third friday of every single month depending on the month of the contract that you have in this particular example December. So it'd be the third Friday of December. Now, we get to the third Friday of December, we look at where the price of oil is. He's got a contract to buy it at 50. Well, it's risen to 65 in this particular example. So simple math. They take 65 minus 15, it's $15 times 1,000 leish because it's 1,000 barrels. That's $15,000 net profit to this particular trader's account. But at the same time, you have to run the risk. December. Simple math. It's ten dollars negative that of elf your negative ten thousand dollars this just gives you a view chart of it i want you to focus only now if you look at the red line the red line is when it started at fifty dollars and let's just say the red line between may and december is the volatility of its up and down throughout the year okay the blue line is your contract. You bought it. Okay. To late, with the luck, to $65. There is your profit. There lies your profit. The yellow line is if it comes to expiry in December. So you can see just in a very basic, simple chart, the volatility would be. I don't want to say much choppier, but it will be more volatile than this type of example that you see on this chart. But I wanted to keep it simple from a from a visionary perspective that you bought a contract at 50 in May, expiry date in December. You're giving yourself a good seven months to let the volatility play out, hopefully in your favor, too suddenly December. Hopefully it's higher than $50 you profit on it. If it's lower, you lose on it. But look at this chart also from a different perspective. During the course from May until December, at some point in time, when you bought it at 50, it went below 50, even though in December it reached $65 at, during the course of the year, can it owe time and Maybe you panicked and you decided to sell. This is why I personally, I'm against panic selling. Panic selling, it's not, it's not healthy. If you panic sell, that means you, you entered and engaged in an investment, one that you were not knowledgeable of or comfortable with, or didn't quite know exactly what it is, what you were doing. And when you see the price of it drop, you panic and you sell. Then again, it goes back to that's what makes markets do what they do. This was a screenshot today from Yahoo of what the options are 
not options as in option contracts, but options as in varieties, variety of uh, futures contracts. Starting up at the top, you got the S&P 500 E-mini, you got the NASDAQ, you got the Dow Futures, you got the S&P VIX, VIX is the volatility index of the US dollar. You got the 10 year treasury, which is the interest rate, links to interest rate. You got crude oil, the WTI. You got natural gas. You got gold, silver, coin, wheat, uh, corn, wheat, soybean, sugar, coal, et cetera. You can see the depth of what the futures markets provide and why they're there. We, yeah, I need. Wheat and corn. Who goes and buys wheat and corn? You buy wheat and corn in bulk. You buy crude oil in bulk. You buy all of these other agricultural, so let's say, products in bulk. But if you're a manufacturer or a farmer, how do you protect yourself? You go to the Chicago board. Uh, the, the Chicago Mercantile Exchange or the Chicago Board of Trade, you enter into a physical delivery futures contract. And this is where the futures markets are created. This is where it originally started. So you can see the depth. Now, we are going to be able, they're going to be able to provide you the different varieties as well. The pros and cons. Pros and cons of getting into a futures contract or not, you just need to understand the goods and the bads. Futures contracts, they are, they speculate on the direction of the price of the underlying asset. The con to that, it can move against you. Companies hedge their price, which we discussed raw materials. What, what's the con against that is that maybe the market needed more demand than they thought and they end up losing uh, on the price uh, value of their commodity. Uh, con futures contracts require deposit of a fraction, which is a positive. You don't have to come up with the full $50,000. Masalan, I had an example that I took a few slides earlier. The downside to that is, is the suit nizid you may have a margin call. It's easy to speculate. I think the S&P 500 is going to continue to go down, Masala, and I want it to continue to go down. I can take a futures position and let it go down. It could be a rough year. Sensitivity, the count to that is to, it can go the other way. Pricing. Simple pricing. It is what it is. The price of the contract is there. You take it or you leave it. You take, you pick the month. We'll get into all those details when it comes time. Liquidity. Liquidity is very deep with the exchange. You have so many brokers linked to these exchanges. Liquidity is there. There's never going to be a liquidity issue when it comes to these. The only problem when you come to liquidity is expiration. When it comes to expiration, you may have taken the right position, but you didn't have enough time for it to come to fruition. It may expire before your uh, vision or your thought would take uh, had taken place. Leverage we've already discussed, and it's an easy way to hedge your portfolio. I know I'm going uh, a little overboard on the first introduction, but the key takeaways here, we're at the very end now. Uh, their futures are derivative financial contract obligations or obligating the buyer to purchase an asset or the seller to sell an asset at a predetermined future date at a set price. The contract allows an investor to speculate on the direction of a security, a commodity, or any type of financial instrument. Futures are also used to hedge price against price movement of the underlying asset that they may be already involved in to prevent losses uh, in unfavorable markets or price changes. The settlement of these futures contracts with tick mill, like I said earlier, are cash settlements. So no physical settlement, 
will be a problem. You're not going to end up, if you forget to close your contract out, having a thousand barrels of oil show up at your, door, at your doorstep, Uh Last word I just said, no physical delivery, so that's not a problem. Last but not least, a, few, a, a, a quote from Carlos Slim Halu, who is a Mexican Lebanese businessman, uh, considered the richest man in the world in 2010 through 2013 by Forbes uh, business magnate. His quote, with a good perspective on history, we can have a better understanding of the past and present and thus clear vision of the future. I'm going to leave on that note. And if anybody has any questions, I see a question here and I have some raised hands and I'm gonna see what I can get to. I might not be able to get to everyone because uh, I promised Tickmill I would stay within 20 to 30 minutes and I'm already 45 minutes in. So if you've been with me this long, I appreciate your, your interest and your ears. And let me get to what we have here. Uh, question, can I have the PowerPoint slide by email? Yes, I can email this to you, uh, pending on TickMail. I'll clear that with TickMail uh, before, since I don't work directly with TickMail uh, as an employee. Uh, second one. Will the recording be available? Yes, TickMill has told me that there will be a recording available on YouTube, so you'll be able to come back, uh, rewind, and listen to any parts uh, that that uh, you may not have understood or or need to listen to again to get to get better clarity. Let's see anyone else? If anyone else has any other questions, please go ahead. Otherwise, there's one more which just popped up. Uh, what about giving up the contract? Like I said earlier, um, Muhammad, uh, this for everyone is a contract mojude. You have the contract bain idek at any point in time. Fik sakira manak majbur ta'ad u tahmila to expiration date there's you can close it at any time but just know that during the course of the time frame during the course of the time frame the volatility of the market is going to change the value of your contract so if the volatility of the market moves your contract and it becomes more profitable for you and you're happy with the profits at that point in time and you don't feel like waiting till expiration date, fik tsakira, ma fi mishkli abadan. Can we get this speech in Arabic? <laughs> Jean, fi ahki ba Arabi, ma andi mishkli, bas, la khabar kun shagli. Al Arabi tabai is self taught. And I, I really worked hard to wear. I can get to the point where I can communicate and have business conversations in Arabic. Uh, English is my first language. Arabi, bahke, maandi mishkli. But la idar, let's say, tfasir, u foot bit tafasil, li lazim foot fi on behead al mawdua, ahyan li be inglisi. So batizar min konektir is a hkit akterit al presentation be inglisi. بس كمان يعني حيا لسوير بالعربي بفهم كل شيء وبحكي كل شيء بالعربي ما تعطلهم بس أريح لي بهيد الموضوع عشان هيد الموضوع حساسي يعني ما بدي أحكي شيء اللي أنا مفكر براسي أنا عم بحكي مزبوط بالعربي بس يمكن تطلع غلط وبالإنجليزي دغري أنا في فصل مية بالمية شو هي لازم يكون بالإنجليزي بس يمكن تطلع بالغلط بالعربي سو بعتذر منكم بهيد الموضوع إذا أحكيت كتير بالإنجليزي مرت الجاي مثل ما قلت لكم بعد عنا هذا أول أول ويبنار بين عشرة وعنا فترة طويلة بهيد الموضوع عشان هيد السكتر كتير مهمة وهيد السكتر كتير فيها فرص وفرصة كبيرة خصوصي هلا بهيد الوضع اللي عم بستير معنا بالوضع لإرجع المواد أمريكا بالإنترست ريتس بالإنفليشن 
والموضوع روسيا واوكرانيا بالموضوع النفط بالموضوع الذهب في كذا في في كذا اشياء بذات الوقت بيرفكت ستورم اذا بدك بسموها بالانجليزي اللي عم بيصير هلا بالاسواق الماليه وهلا كثير 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 في فرصه كبيره خصوصي مع فيوتشرز كونتراكتس حدا تاني اوكي لوكس لايك هيدا هي اذا ذاتس ات شرفنا شرفنا وبدي شكركم كثير وان شاء الله بشوفكم الاسبوع الجاي الاسبوع الجاي will be the second webinar in the futures webinar series لتكمل عندنا مثل ما قلت لكم 10 يا 9 يا 10 ويبنارز وكل وحده بدنا نفوت بالتفاصيل اكثر واكثر واكثر بالديتيلز هيدي كانت الانتروداكشن شو هن كيف بنستعملهم ليش وشو السبب تبعهم وهذا هي من الاخر تصبح على خير شرفتنا وان شاء الله بشوفكم نيكست ويك ليتس سي اف بعد في حدا هذا هي تصبح على خير and good luck with your trading if you have any questions uh, directly related to me please get in touch with tickmill tickmill will guide you directly to me i'm uh, i i uh, i'm in direct contact with them and i will be able to get in contact with anybody specifically if they need tisbalah khair and have a great evening